Okay, so Norman McBrien is, is from an organization called Exam Time, and I came across Exam Time probably about six months or so. Does anybody else in the room know about ExamTime.com? Great. That means there's a lot of new people who can go and discover a really fascinating resource. If you want to look at something innovative in education, this is a great place to look. Mind mapping is a component part of what exam time does, but it's a really interesting website that I really encourage you to look at. If any of you have children doing exams, go and get them to have a look at it. Um, I've asked Norman to come and talk a little bit about where he sees mind mapping fitting in maybe a more school level education. Um, Norman and the exam time team, whenever I speak to them, they say, just to be clear, we're not education experts and we're not mind mapping experts. What they're really trying to understand is how to make good content accessible to people for studying. I think that's a fair reflection, Norman. Um, so I'm going to introduce Norman. Hopefully my computer won't let you down and uh, we'll hear what you've got to say. Thank you, Norman. Thanks, Liam. Okay, good afternoon at this stage, everybody. Hope you're having a good day. Um, unfortunately, I missed a lot of the morning. I had to fly in from Dublin this morning and there was fog in Dublin Airport. So um after racing through london in the last hour or so we, we finally got here so um yep thanks Liam, for the opportunity to speak today uh, <coughs> as Liam said I, i'm part of the exam time team so uh, what we are is we're a software company and we're a software company that uh, <coughs> creates software to allow students and teachers to create discover and share engaging learning resources so um Typically, we have a number of tools, mind maps, flashcards, notes, and quizzes. And we have that on a platform, a, a personal learning platform, uh, where students can create, they can collaborate, they can share, uh, they can set up groups, etc. So it's a, it's, a, it's a collaboration website as well as an individual learning website, a personal learning website. So what I'm going to uh, go through today is, is where we see, you know, from a from a you know from our view of things as a as a software company where we see the impact of mind mapping within education as Liam said I'm not an educational expert I'm, I'm fortunate that I missed Madeline's talk earlier I would have been very interested in that but these are kind of our thoughts on you know from a software company point of view you know what we see out there what users are are doing um, Okay, so before we step into mind mapping, in, in specifically, you know, as a software company, um, we're trying to create um, solutions um, for educators and for students. And one of the things driving this is that, you know, uh, stats like this one, 65% of today's grade school kids will end up in jobs that haven't been created yet. When I came across this stat last year, I was, it was kind of, my mind was blown, but it just encapsulates the rate of change in, you know, in, you know, in the world today and, and, and the workplace. So that creates pressures for education, obviously. So, you know, what educators need to do is to um, produce students with new types of skills, flexible students, um, who, who, who are adaptable, who can adapt to the ever-changing workplace. Like, what blew me away about this is, I, you know, I can relate to that totally. I know I'm only a young fellow myself, but um, even the stuff I'm doing now on a day-to-day -day stuff, you know, when I was in school, it wasn't even heard of. So um, there is a pressure there um, to come up with solutions that allow uh, for flexible learning. And also, you know, there's it's not about just learning information anymore. All the world's information is... Is, is freely available here in the room. Um, so that creates a pressure to, um, to create a new skill set for, for students to you know, develop the skills, to interpret, to analyze, and to create value from basic raw information. And thirdly, you know, you know, part of what we're about is there is an opportunity there for software to, to, um, to give access to education to you know, all parts of the world. Um, it's dependent on hardware as well, of course, but even, you know, the power of mobile phones now, and if, if you can get kids using software on mobile phones in remote areas, that, you know, that can change the world for the good. So that is happening at the moment. Um, I'll introduce you to prof Professor Eduardo Villa here. He's from a town in uh, Ecuador called Chumboroaza, or something like that. So he's... he's He's an example of a leader in, in digital education. So uh, for about 10 years now, he has been s setting up e what he calls e-classes or e-schooling, where um, he creates classes, online classes, 
um, virtual classes, if you like. So this allows kids in remote areas to access information and tools. So he's been doing it for about 10 years. He came to our attention about two years ago when he started using exam time. Um, and he, uh, you know, we spoke with him and we ended up getting featured on a Euronews um, uh, feature about him, you know, and how he's using the, all these different tools, um, not just exam time, but including exam time to, um, to allow students in remote areas to access education. And, you know, they interviewed students and, and the one thing they said was, we don't need to be in the classroom anymore. We don't need a teacher anymore. We have these tools. The teacher sets the agenda via these tools and then we can go and use these tools ourselves. So it is happening as we speak within education. So, you know, <coughs> from our point of view, the exam time team, we started off um, in the education market, but uh, the genesis of the company is in software reselling, actually. So uh, we used to uh, get student uh, student software discounts, um, and we used to set, so we had a, we set up a an online store software for students. I'm not sure if you heard about it. It's very popular in the UK, and um, so for years we were kind of the leading student software seller online. But what we noticed was that all the software we're selling was productivity tools, Microsoft Office, etc., cetera, uh, antivirus, a bit of creative stuff with Adobe, but nothing to do with learning. And we thought this was very odd. We also dabbled in creating some um, uh, learning platforms for schools, and we realized that you know, a lot of the learning platforms that are out there are developed for institutions. So what that means is they're big, they're institutions, they're all about maybe efficiency or whatever. So we saw an opportunity maybe to bridge the gap there to create software that's dedicated um, to learning that is easily accessible for teachers and students. So you know, a, te uh, a teacher can just go on and try it and bring it directly into the classroom. They don't need a big institution sale. So that's our background and that's what motivated us to start exam time and start exploring um, digital tools and how they can help the learning process. So uh, <coughs> when we started, we started looking around and, um, you know, we said we wanted to do something online, you know, where students can easily access. So what are the learning tools that, that can help? And the first one we stumbled across was mind maps, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, from talking to the teachers that, you know, um, we came across within software for students and within our, um, within, uh, <coughs> within our other products, the one thing they were saying was mind maps have a huge potential in the classroom. Um, for engagement, for creativity, uh, for brainstorming. So um, this was the first tool we developed um, and has proven to be the most popular within our suite of tools from day one. And so I'll take you through three ways mind maps are making a difference for individual students in the classroom and just online in general. So what mind maps, what we're seeing, what mind maps can do is they can create active learning. So um, the, I think one of the great debates, as a, as a company, we started off, we wanted to help um, students learn, you know, achieve exam success. Um, and, you know, one of the easiest things we could do was, was in education is to create a content site. So create all the answers to, you know, GCSE maths, you know, have all the paper, have all the past papers, have all the answers there, content, content, content. And that's what a lot of students just want. They want to go online. They want to be able to see the content, see the answers, try and learn them off and succeed. But <laughs> we didn't want to do that. And we still don't want to do that. Um, it's a constant fight to say we're not going to become a content company, we're going to become a creation company. So we're going to create the tool, we're going to invest our resources in, in uh, creating tools that students can use to actively learn. So what we find is with, with exam time we have a, the, the tools we've created create a kind of learning journey. So mind maps are the, the first step of that and they're the key part where students can um, uh, use my maps to understand the context context of a subject so they map it out they they see um they see the the subject as a whole they see the context they understand the connections they can use the brainstorm and it's the first step in that understanding piece and learning then our other tools like notes help you you know uh, summarize your understanding the flashcards help you you know memorize key important facets of 
be it dates or language or, you know, et cetera. And then our quizzes feature allows you to uh, test your knowledge on that. But the mind maps are the first and most important part of that, where the basic understanding comes from. So, um, like I said, it's been a constant uh, struggle for us to, to remain um, a creation company. And what has helped us on that path is one of our first rev reviews that we got uh, was from a US, um, a US teacher and a US blogger, Adam Renfro. Uh, so he talked about um, uh, study, you know, study. And he said, the, the smart students get that studying is a doing activity. It's not a question of going home, looking through your notes, and then, OK, go on to the internet. The smart students you know, actively take their own notes. They get out the highlighter. They start uh, creating mind maps to understand the information. And he said, that's the difference between the sm smart students and the average students. So the average students need a push. Uh, they need a push in their learning to become active learners. And that's what uh, mind maps is a fantastic tool that we found uh, for allowing students to become active learners and to take responsibility for their learning. Um, it, you know, we, we survey our, our uh, students regularly. Mind mapping is the most popular uh, tool that we have, and the most popular feedback we get from mind maps is it takes the boredom out of study and it eliminates procrastination. Students can just jump in, start doing their mind maps, start exploring ideas, um, and they feel they're not studying at all. So my map is fantastic for that. You know, there's an example there of a, of a US teacher who's getting his class to uh, create mind maps on all various um, historical events and then and tweet that. The second area is more in the classroom for teachers. So active learning is about individuals taking responsibility and mind maps is, 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 um, is helping that. The second thing is for teachers. Uh, where mind mapping is helping. And it, it, we come across this thing recently called deeper learning. So the US, in the US, they have a, a, a Senate um, passed a bill back in 2008 to set up on, uh, an organization to encourage deeper learning or to encourage digital learning in the US. So one of the things they found was that you know, they wanted students, for reasons that I uh, talked about earlier, um, to start ex exploring new ways of learning, deeper learning, so applying knowledge to real life situations and practicing key life competencies and students taking ownership again. So what they've done, this um, digital uh, promise team within the US have identified micro-credentials for um, educators in the US. So they have come up with a range of 40 micro-credentials that they are recommending in the US for educators to help um, to help transform digital learning in the US and uh, help the widespread adaptation of deeper learning. And the first thing that they have identified, they have six key areas. First area is master core academic content. And if you can see there, items, you know, the first thing is making projects real, so trying to give real life context to a project or a problem or a solution. But then it's all about mapping fa facts, mapping processes, and mapping concepts. So. Um, they've cottoned on to the, to the value of mind maps um, in terms of understanding and mapping out you know, the key facts, processes, or, or concepts, um, in, and applying that to a real life scenario. There's some great examples of deeper learning and action on, on their website. You know, um, as, a, as a concept, it's a fantastic concept. It, you know, there's examples like in, in the US classrooms when they're learning about sources of energy, they go off and they don't just learn about, okay, what are the main sources of energy? They go off and one group will discover, okay, well, where could we put, you know, wind farms in our state? Other, you know, another class will go and try and do a project on making solar panels, that type of thing. So it's really interesting stuff and mind maps is at the heart of it. Um, within the <coughs> UK, an example uh, uh, closer to home, in the UK, this is, um, handsome man is David Baines. So he's a religious education teacher in the UK. And he's been using mind maps um, to engage students in his classroom. So the problem he had was um, he was finding it difficult to engage students um, and get the, the main concepts across within the classroom. So uh, he started using mind mapping. The first thing he did was he started creating mind mapping, mind maps himself to, 
to present content. And he found it was a lot more engaging when students uh, were presented con content um, in this format. Um, after that, so he'd introduce the basic concept, and then you know, he'd have a class discussion, they'd have a class discussion on the topic, um, and then he'd let the students go away and develop their learning from that initial mind map. So they would have to go away and work on a certain area and start creating their own mind maps and creating links to mind maps, uh, trying to piece the information together, uh, getting deeper sources, getting more in-depth into the information. Then they come back and present their mind maps within the classroom. So um, what he found was engagement levels went up, understanding levels went up, he actually, which, which was a surprise to us, but he actually found that uh, stre exam stress um, was reduced because students were more engaged. They felt they had more an overview uh, and more of an understanding of the topic. Um, and the general outcome was that within a year of using this approach, he saw 170 students and they saw a 10% increase across the board in their grades and the number of students who got an A stroke B grade went from 35% to 60% plus. So uh, he got fantastic results. So it's happening today, it's happening in the classroom. The third thing, third area I just want to touch on is, and you guys today are living proof of that, is um, that the world today, going back to one of my original points, it's it's, it's lifelong learners. We're all lifelong learners now. So what the digital tools and the internet uh, has, has facilitated is the ability um, to learn online like we interact online. So what we do as a business is, you know, we're trying to tap into the everyday habits of, of kids, you know, using social networks. We're trying to tap into that for um, learning. And <clears throat> it's fantastic. We're, we're seeing this in a number of ways. Um, this is an example. So what digital tools allow you to do is you can create your content, but then you can publish it. This is an example. Um, let's see. I'll just play this in the background. I know it's very small, but um, this is uh, one of our users in Brazil, and he was studying for a public exam. Okay, it's not working. Is it? He, okay, it's not that important. He was studying for a public exam, um, so he started creating using mind maps um, to understand the main concepts. Um, now, th on the exam time, mind mapping, there's a play feature, so you can create your mind map, and then there's a play function, so your mind map plays back as you create it. So that's it's great for the classroom for um, for showing the steps in the <coughs> in the in the uh, content. So. What he did was he, he created content for his own use, um, but then he just stuck it up on YouTube. He created a video, a screen ca cra cast of his mind map, and he just stuck it up on YouTube for anyone else to see. And within a couple of days, he had 12,000 views on YouTube. Um, so it just shows you that uh, the digital tools there today are making it so much easier for people to share, share great content. Um, and we're seeing um, mind maps to the, f to the fore we have, um, so within exam time, you have the ability to embed resources on any website. So you can uh, create a mind map within exam time and then embed it into your blog. And um, so since we started about two and a half years ago, we've had uh, over four and a half million views of mind maps embedded on various blogs worldwide. We're, you know, I should, I should have said we're, it's a it's a worldwide solution. So one of the things we talked about earlier when we t we are a creation company, we create software, and what that means is it allows us to to um, uh, to make the tools available anywhere in the world. We have a couple of different language versions um, of our software, so that means it's it's used worldwide basically. But yeah, four and a half million mind maps have been viewed as an embed um, through exam time over the last two and a half years. I've totally messed this up now. Oh yeah, so so it makes it easy to publish, um, and it, it also makes it easy to collaborate. And I guess this is you know, yeah, but this is what Liam and the team do so well as well is is bringing together the information and making it easily accessible. And that's what we try and do as well. And what we try and do with our mind maps is is make it easy to collaborate. So 
Again, this is an example of a, a mind map that a student created. Um, it's got 986 views, but it's got, I think, 137 comments. So the um, student created it, someone else comes along and goes, yeah, it's a very good, but it's worth mentioning that, blah, 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 blah. You know, you might have missed this, or you might want to explore that as well. So that's the type of thing that um, uh, is is happening out there today, and that's the benefit where digital tools, the internet, cloud computing, combined with a fantastic concept like mind mapping, are, is really helping shape education. So like I said, mind, mind mapping is by far our, our most popular tool. Uh, we've had over 38 million s study sessions created, and 21 million of these are mind maps. So um, it was our first uh, study tool that we created, and it's been our most most popular ever since. Um, so the challenge for us is to make the other ones even more as as popular. Um, so I'll, I'll <coughs> wrap it up. I'm getting the one minute to go. So really, uh, my main point, I guess, is that technology is enhancing the power of mind maps. You're all mind map fans here, or you're all interested in mind maps. You see the benefit of it. So technology is really enhancing it enhancing the power of mind maps and this the combination of technology and learning is our technology and mind maps is changing learning changing it on day to day so um that's it just you know, using mind maps keep experimenting keep trying things there's loads of brilliant tools out there um all right okay thank you very much that, that was great i hope you can hear me down the end there um one of the many reasons I wanted Norman to come and speak and one of the reasons I followed Craig straight afterwards is yeah. new yeah. entrance to this microphone, world. Microphone, yeah. Liam. Microphone, new, ent new entrance to the mind mapping world I think are really exciting. Um, Craig, I'm afraid, I have to say, you have shown in, in entering the world with iPads how quickly new entrants can become established players. So that's why when I see a new company come on who's done something so interesting with mind mapping being right at the heart of it, I think it is just such a good sign to all of us who've been saying for years this stuff is really good. I think it's particularly interesting that you guys seem to have had a conscious choice that we're going to go with this mind mapping thing because it seems so right, it seems so popular. Um, so thank you, Norman, for that. Are there any questions for Norman? I'm hoping there are because I think there's a lot of really good stuff there. So there's one over there and I'll pass this back to you, Norman. an embarrassing question in this room but I'd just like to ask you did you look at concept maps as a because I I found that um, I use I'm a great fan of mind mapping myself but for personal learning I I've tend to use concept maps because the structure is a bit more amenable to learning I just wondered whether that was a dirty word here or whether it was um, something that other people use <laughs> uh, no not really I, I think again what you need to realize is that um, you know we've, we're trying to create tools and solutions that uh, are beneficial to the edu education sector. Um, what we did is we said we'll, we, we create a set of basic tools and then create the ecosystem around it so people can share, people can collaborate, um, you know, create private groups. The next challenge for us is to enhance those tools. So our mind mapping tool um, where it has good functionality, it's very easy to use. Uh, you can add images, you can add attachments. Our next step now is to create different variations on that. So things like concept mapping or, you know, um, other type of, you know, visual uh, aids that will help education. So, yeah, that's very much in our thoughts. I thought I saw a second hand over in that area when I asked that question. Yeah. Okay, which one? Oh, the hand question was answered by our question. Was uh, right. Thank you. Any other questions for Norman? There's one there. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I just had a look at your website, um, and I just wondered whether your mapping tool is something that uh, groups of people, groups of students can work on a shared map, or whether it's uh, a single person creating their own map. So at, at the moment, a single person can uh, create, and we, you can copy and edit that yourself. We don't have real-time collaboration as of yet. But you know what? What works is that you know um, people create a, ma a mind map, and other people can take their own copy and expand on that. 
Any further questions from here? One there, Madeline. Yeah, for the um, uh, mind map. <laughs> uh, can you export the content from the mind map into the flashcards? No, uh, no, we can't. What we've done is though we've expanded our note functionality. So uh, notes will become our uh, a main, a really powerful tool now. So you can embed, so you can create a digital note and you can embed your mind map. You can embed a flashcard deck or you can embed a quiz within a note. So you can summarize all the information uh, and have those other learning resources there and a quiz down at the bottom. So you have, you know, on one digital page, you have mm -hmm. the suite of tools, you know, summarizing an overall subject. So we're, we only released that uh, quite recently. So we're quite excited about that. You can download um, a mind map as a PNG at the moment as well. Mm -hmm. Just a really quick question: Is is this all just software, or is this um, sort of app? Can, is it going to be app based, or is it app based? Uh, so we yeah we've mobile apps as well. Uh, so our mobile apps again it just uh, launched recently, and uh, they are uh, what we call consumption apps. So uh, you just view resources. You don't create on the mobile apps at the moment. It's just for you know viewing stuff you've already done or trying to discover other people's resources. Uh, round of applause and thank you once again Norman, that's great, really appreciate it.